In this chapter, I just want to share several pieces of advice and good practice with you. So this is a bit of a miscellaneous chapter that well, contains tidbits and anecdotes and the little gems of insights from a lot of years of experimental experience. And so I hope you find something helpful here. I recommend programming all treatments of an experiment in one treatment file in Setri. So I know colleagues who have a separate ZTT file for each treatment, but this way you have the problem that if you want to make a change in one of these treatments, you have to propagate this into all of the other treatments. Of course, if it's a general change, it should affect all of them. And uh, you, you multiply the risk of making mistakes and you also increase the risk that you have treatments that diverge, that you have not reflected a change in all treatments. So I rather keep everything in one file and have a little switch, basically a variable that just says treatment one, treatment two, treatment three. And if treatment is equal to one, um, then a box is shown or is not shown or a certain functionality is enabled or not or disabled. Um, and this way I can keep everything in one file and have only one version that I need to uh, maintain. Secondly, I like to use speaking variable names. So if you have variables, variables like x1 through x17, uh, you will, coming back to your code, have no idea what these are for. If instead you call them contribution or um, is proposer or things like that, where basically looking at the variable, you already know what is in it. That is very helpful, makes it much easier to read the code later on. And the small cost of having longer variable names to type is worth the increase of, uh, in, in transparency here. Furthermore, something that I mentioned at a few points in the course, I think, define all the variables in the background. That uh, also gets rid of some errors and mistakes that can happen later on. Um, and also increases the chance that it will all be in the same order in the output files if that is something you need for your Excel um, well, for using the output files in Excel. Then you can change the timeout during the experiment. I think I mentioned this before also. You would, instead of writing a number, the number of seconds into the timeout field of a stage definition, you would use a variable there, a variable from the globals table. And then you can modify this variable in the period parameters in the parameter table, even while the experiment is already being played. So you can modify all the periods after the current one, and this will, well, and Setri will apply this information, which is not something you want to do during the experiment usually, but for example, in a pilot session, this can be very helpful, where you, where you, where you are not sure how long people will take in a particular stage, and if it turns out they're much faster than you expected, then you can uh, adjust the time that they need, or maybe also if they're much slower than expected, so that they can test more meaningfully or they don't have to sit around for so long. And finally for this slide, the stop after this period option. So click run, stop after this period. Um, I use this both in testing and sometimes you can also have an experiment where you make use of this option, for example, as a, as a, um, a cheap way of implementing a random ending period. Just make the experiment or the number of periods very long and then um, stop using this stop after this period option. In this case, uh, if you have not tried it yet, the period runs its course, but then the treatment stops. You can use the export function to export your entire Setri treatment into a text file. So Setri will convert what you see on your screen when you edit your treatment in a Setri to a text only format. And um, then you can do multiple things with it. The first thing I want to point out to you is that sometimes if you want to replace some code throughout your entire experiment, so for example, you want to rename a variable, you can do that by exporting the code to a text file and then using the simple search and replace function in, for example, a notepad or your editor of choice, and then re-import the entire treatment file into set tree. This way, you can be sure you found every instance of this variable name in the, in the entire code and everything works fine again. 
The second um, use of the expert function is for version control. So many version control systems like uh, the Git um, standard handle only text files really effectively. And this way um, you can export your treatment and then import it into your version control system and keep track of the changes from, uh, from day to day that you work on your treatment and also roll back changes or apply these changes to other uh, related treatments, um, forks basically, if you want to speak in, in terms of Git, uh, efficiently and, and uh, ruling out any mistakes in this process. If you don't know what I'm talking about with version control systems, then don't worry. One thing that I mentioned before is that the timings of subject actions that Cetri keeps for you are relatively meager and not very precise. So Cetri only keeps time if there is a time count running in the, in the stage. Um, it only keeps it with one second precision and um, it only keeps, for example, the last time you click the button. So instead, um, you can use the get time function in Cetri. So simply use get time and then opening and closing uh, parentheses to return to you the time in well as a numeric variable since the computer was started, basically as the, in the form of the second since the computer was started, but with a precision of milliseconds. And you can save the result in a variable, for example, at the beginning of the period. And then at any time something happens that you wish to record the time of, you can calculate the difference between the variable you saved at the beginning of the period and the current uh, result of get time to get uh, the time in seconds that has elapsed since the beginning of the period. Now, one application for this timekeeping uh, procedure is a time lock table, which is something I now keep in most of my experiments. I create my own user defined table that is called time log uh, and has a life of session. So I actually like to keep this time log and for the entire experiment. And um, I log all important events into this time lock table. So, for example, I record the starting time of the entire experiment as the first uh, entry in this table. So I save the current time um, at the beginning. So this, this is the first program in my background. At the beginning of the experiment, I save the current time in a variable called start time. And then I, I create a new row in the time lock table that has ID equal to one. Uh, records the time as being zero because we're just starting the period as zero because it's before even the first period. Um, I record subject as zero because this event is not uh, tied to any particular subject. And the event I'm recording here, I list as event one because I then have a list of different event types. So this is what this list could look like. And this is basically an excerpt from my documentation for this time lock table. So you see there is the identifier, the time in seconds since the start of the treatment, the current period, the subject number, zero if it's not applicable. And then if event is equal to one, this was the time of the program start. Event two was the start of the stage named vote. Three was a subject finished voting. Now for, for event three, I would also record the subject number and so on. So you can see all kinds of events that happen in the experiment, even individual clicks and so on, I can record with the, in this type of table. So for example, if the decision stage starts, I would say the time log is now the maximum ID in the time log table plus one. So I'm just adding one to the highest number there. Then I calculate the time as the current time minus the start time. The period is the current period. Subject again is not applicable and the event number is six. Or another example, um, the, the subject continues on from screen instructions number two. Uh, so here I would actually record the subject number as well. Yeah? So this program would be run in, the, in a button that the subject presses and would automatically record which subject pressed the button. And so this way, 
I get a table that looks like this. I have the, the period that the time that the event was recorded in, the ID of the event, which is just an increasing number here, the exact time in seconds with millisecond precision, the subject that took the action and the actual event, so the actual action that was taken. And with this type of table, I have an extremely comprehensive overview of all the timings in my experiment, and I can use this later on in the analysis. Now, I started doing this after I had an experiment where I, after having run the experiment, it turned out that we wanted to look at how long people took to answer the control questions for the experiment. But uh, unfortunately, we had set our control question sta stage not to use a timeout. So we set the timeout to minus one. And thus, the button clicks of the subjects were not recorded or the timing was not recorded. And so we simply could not run this analysis. And once I had made this harrowing experience of not being able to run such an analysis, um, I, I turned to keeping a time log table where I record all of this information such that I in the future can basically even afterwards come back and decide that I need a new analysis and I want to analyze the timings of some events and I, I'm sure to be able to do that. Something else that I have is in essentially all of my experiments is a so-called experimenter subject, which just means that um, I add an extra set leaf that is for me as the experimenter on the experimenter computer. Uh, that can be used, I mentioned this before, to, for example, enter a dive throw into a set tree, but it can also be used for many other things. So I have usually a variable that is called is experimenter, and that is one for the observer subject, for the experimenter, and zero for all others. And what I like to do is to have the experimenter as the last subject. So if I have 12 people in the experiment, then the experimenter would be subject number 13, and they would get this one in the is experimenter variable. And then I can create specific stages or just in a given stage boxes that are only shown if this variable is set equal to one and not shown for all people whose variables are set equal to zero, such that in the same stage, the subjects see one screen and I can see another screen. I can, for example, see a screen that gives me summary information about what is going on in the stage at the moment. I can also have specific observer stages where I exclude the other uh, participants and only let me in. And of course, exclude myself from the participant stages so I don't uh, get to make decisions like a, a usual, a normal subject. And um, you can also use this, for example, to implement a break where you as the experimenter need to click something for the experiment to continue so that you can, for example, give them additional instructions or so in the middle of the experiment without having to, well, do to, to, to interrupt people and tell them not to click anything or so because um, this way you can just specify that the experiment can only continue when the experiment has pressed the button. So it's in your hands uh, to control the, the continuation of the experiment. If you run your experiment in more than one country and these countries have different languages, um, you need to translate your treatment to different languages. And that can be quite tedious and it can also be error prone uh, to not miss any, any texts in your treatment. But fortunately, 2019, Alice Hun, Saral and Anna-Marie Schröter came along and programmed CBRAC, which is a, a tool, a software to make set treatments multilingual. So what you would do uh, to use this tool is to write the text in your set treatment within square brackets. And then you can use this tool to systematically replace all of these texts with different language versions. Now, of course, you could always also do this simply by using the search and replace function on the exported uh, treatment code, but it's much easier and con more convenient using this uh, extra tool that is free to use. Sometimes you may wish to rank your subjects by some value that they have entered. And uh, these are some examples of how you can do that. Now the ranking is by the higher the value in the variable called value, the lower the rank. 
And then there are three options of how you can uh, calculate the rank. Rank low means in case of ties, uh, all subjects that are tied get the lower rank. So if you have three people who are first who have the highest value and value, they all get the rank one. Rank high means they all get the higher rank. So in this example, they would all get the rank three. And rank middle means they get the middle rank. So in this case, they would get the rank two. If you want to rule out ties, uh, then what you need to do essentially, and I've, I've illustrated this in this ex uh, ex example here, where the ranking variable is, is x, so you want to rank uh, depending on how high the x is for individual subjects. Uh, what you need to do, the essential thing here, is to add a random variable, and I'm assuming you're using integers for x, then multiply this variable with a factor like 0.01. In this case, in this way, it does not influence the integer rank, but it will still, when you calculate the ranking like this, so we first uh, create a ranking variable that is the original variable, including this uh, random number. And then we rank according to this X rank uh, variable by just counting the number of subjects whose x rank is greater than the x rank of a given subject, such that this given subject then gets this, this count plus one. So imagine uh, you have the highest number, the highest x rank, then the, the count here would yield the result of zero because no other subject has a higher rank of x rank and adding plus one gives you the rank of one. And this, this technique of just adding a very small random number is actually quite useful in many situations in set tree, but also in programming in general, uh, to break any ties. When it comes to calculating your subject's payouts, you can of course use the exchange rate setting in set tree's background to do the conversion from experimental currency units to real currency units. But what I like to do instead, and I'm going to show you why, is to use my own exchange rate variable. So I set the exchange rate in Setry's background uh, settings to equal, one, to equal one and create two variables in the globals table. One of them uh, is the variable exchange rate, which I set to the exchange rate in, in terms of real currency units divided by experimental currency units and a currency variable that is, is kind of a categorical variable that has a one for euros, for example, a two for US dollars, a three for whatever currency uh, you want to use. And then in my items that I show to subjects, I would write something like the following. So in this case, um, I'm, I'm trying to show subjects how much they get paid for answering a quiz question correctly. Um, and uh, in the in the relevant section of this of this text down here, it says this means that you will receive an additional payment of. Then I put the question payoff in terms of experimental currency units, and multiply it by the exchange rate from the globals table to show them the actual payoff in real currency units. And furthermore, I then add the currency symbol or currency description here, text here that I would like to show them. And this way I can have only one place where I change both the exchange rate and the currency that I want to use in a given experiment, which is in the globals table. And throughout my entire experiment, wherever I'm showing people their payouts or talking about payouts, I can rely on these variables to display the information correctly. So I can run the same experiment in, in, as you can see here, in somewhere in the Euro area, in the United States, in Denmark, or in Australia. And I just change the exchange rate and the currency symbol, and I'm fine. All that is displayed to subjects will be automatically changed. And you cannot do this if you have set the exchange rate in the background of set tree, because you cannot access what is in this exchange rate value in the background. So I rather do uh, the exchange rate treatment myself uh, through my own globals table variables. And the final piece of advice for this chapter, do join the Setry mailing list. You can sign up using uh, this URL here, 
you can see the instructions here. This is a, a list of people who work in Cetri and who apply Cetri in their own experiments. And um, if you have a problem there, then of course, first check the manual and try to figure it out yourself. But once you've done that, do not hesitate to reach out to send an, by sending an email to the list. And you will usually get a reply within a few hours uh, of, well, a reply by usually very helpful people who will point you in the right direction or even uh, help you solve your problem. Of course, try to describe your problem very clearly and provide what is called a minimum working example. That is a, a small set tree treatment, as small as you can make it and still show the problem so that people can replicate the problem uh, and work on that before answering you.